All right, let's get into now getting, um, doing, finally, some real stuff. So what's going to be pretty typical is, you know, the things get started. Um, they they want to connect to your app. Let's just say your app is going to be doing invoices. Your app does invoices. Your customers want, your clients want to get those invoices into QuickBooks for accounting reasons. You set up the web connector. We did that. Typically, you're going to import in customers and items in this particular case. Depending on if you're doing, if you're doing journal entries, you do chart of accounts. You may do chart of accounts anyway for some reason. Uh, we're going to stick it, make it uh, simple right now. Uh, purchase orders would need vendors. All right. But really, like, I think a lot of the use cases is customers and invoices. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, it's actually easier to do vendors because they don't have um, this concept of jobs or sub customers, as it's called in uh, QuickBooks Online. And uh, so, but let's jump in. And this is going to also, this is going to go over a very important topic called uh, iterators in and a query in the QB SDK to the QuickBooks Web Connector. So, right, um, what I do here is, uh, let's just say, uh, so the customer now, they're done setting up, uh, they gotta go through, your next step might be, hey, you need to import your customers. Now, typically, you could kick that off yourself by creating something in the queue. So I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna hit this button. This creates a queue now I've cleaned out customers. You can tell I have a queue here. The queue is filled up right now. Um, I'm going to use the uh, this database view I've been showing over here to show the queue. I think it's more compact. But um, in the queue, let me do this again. Okay. Uh, okay. So what I've added now to the queue is this. Make some of these columns a little smaller. Maybe we can get this everything in. Okay, good, we can. Okay, so we, we have an unprocessed queue item. <clears throat> That's gonna hit, again, this, uh, this job checking thing we do. In auth, we check if there's any jobs. Now we're gonna get a hit for an open job because this is unprocessed. The ticket's not made yet. Uh, went over some of the columns. Don't worry about some of these right now. What it's saying is, is I'm making a query action for customer, and that means to get all of the customers. So bear with me on this, because some of this is like inside baseball. It's not particular to what you might be doing. I'm, I'm setting up these concepts of action, like query, add or modify. I'll explain them all, you should do them too. Query handler, that's what I'll go over right now. Um, I think it's a good way to do things, but you could always do things a little differently. So this will give you the concepts of, of what's going on. So what happens here in this queue job is, okay, first of all, there is an open queue job. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mark all those uh, we're going to generate a ticket, and now we're going to go to the, be going to the next step. So we're going to be sending back that there's work to do. Okay, so let's go over. Let's take a look at this document. Okay, so let's let me find the right spot. And basically, what we're going to send back is um, that we want to go to the next step. And by going to the next step, we're going to send back a um, number from 0 to 99. This is going to be a theme. This is the pro what's called a progress theme. If it's uh, not progress theme, this is just what you do um, to show that you go to that you keep going in this process. Here. Again, the process starts with authenticate, goes to send request, receive response, close connection. 
if at any point the, these responses give back a negative one, a 100, a zero, I guess, you don't keep going. You will call, uh, excuse me, okay, so if you return a negative one, it goes back to a connection error, okay, which is, it, which is a response called connection error. Um, if it is a number from zero to 99, you will call send request again. Okay, so we first did the authenticate action. We're gonna return back like a 99 in this case. I always return back 99. I don't really kind of, you could get fancy with, with because it could be, it'll show like a progress if you, if you show like a one. And then, then you have to like calculate stuff. I don't like to do that. I, I like to just keep things moving. You can easily see when we look at the, the QuickBooks Web Connector, you can see progress going on and things are And you don't need to like be giving the exact thing back. I always just give a 99 if things need to continue. A negative one if to get it out. Um, a 100 if things are done. That would go to close connection. A 100. But anyway, so we did authenticate. We're going to return back that there's something to do. So let's look at that. Stay on the authenticate method here. So um, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so for this, if there's nothing to do, you send back none during the authenticate. If there is something to do, you just send back a blank string. Okay, you need to keep going. You send back the ticket number and a blank. That's it. That's why you have this here. And I don't have any value sent right here because if in Ruby, if value is not defined, that's what this is for. Then it defaults to this little, just a little shortcut in, in the language. But you notice I didn't have any value set in this uh, conditional. And that's because you just keep moving. You send a blank. The blank tells you to go to the next step, send request. And we're going to build this from the queue. Okay, so now, all right, it's going to hit over to here. Now I have special stuff to, so let's go. So now we're going to be in send request. That's the SOAP action. Let me use this for that. Okay, that's the SOAP action here. It goes to my Ruby method in the class, in the, in the controller of send request, which then I'll switch over to the code for that. All right, this has some looping logic in it. Um, now, what is current job? Current job is just a convenience method that I have right in the controller right here. And what this does is it's gonna get all of the open jobs so I need to go switch to this model now. And so the open jobs just makes a query and it's gonna do it by ticket. It's also gonna put it in an order of priority and they're gonna be all false. Okay, for example, it would grab this whole group right down here. All right, and it's gonna stick it into um, or an array. The um, okay, it's not not quite an array. Okay, um, excuse me. So that's wrong. The, the um, all right now I'm getting confused myself. Just how confusing this stuff is. Uh, anyway, um, actually, what this does in particular, this finds all of the open jobs. And so that it's doing like this uh, select use, using just like in SQL, it, Ruby's hiding some of the SQL. So you might have to do some of the SQL, but it, it's getting all of the jobs based on this criteria. So this should be a where clause, select, QBSDK queues, where processed equals zero, and you order by priority and ID, uh, both in ascending. So that gets the whole, all four of them. What the current job does, or find by in Ruby, that's basically like limit one. 
So it's getting the first one. And um, let's just say there's multiple, like four in there. Okay, after we're done one, we mark it false. Or the process false, one, or one, or true, rather. And when it comes back to current job, when we call current job again, let me, let me go back up to uh, send request. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to mark this. Uh, mark not sent. All right, uh, how about this? I'm going to go back to B and then A. Okay. Um, so it loops if um, receive response XML, you return back a 99 here. Okay, hopefully you're, these guys loop go in this loop. So when I'm done this job, I mark it false. Uh, excuse me, process true. I send back a 99. I'm going to go in more detail on this. This is high level still. I mark 99 in the receive response. Mark the Q job process true. I send back in this response tag a 99. It goes back over here. Okay, when we go back over here in the code, I'm again looking up current job where I'm gathering them all, but this time it's only three right here. And then I'm taking the first one. So you understand that. That's why it says current job. I'm on this current job. I'm going to process this current job. You do the same thing. Just whatever kind of loop logic you want to put in, you do that. Okay. So, uh, okay. So it is present. There is a current job because eventually I'm going to run out and there's not going to be anything present. So there'll be nothing in that array and a nothing in that find by, and then it won't be present. And then I'll, I'll, I'll say, uh, the queue is empty, no more jobs. And I send a blank back actually on send request. Cause it sort of just short circuits the queue. Like it doesn't go over to response, query response. Now this, this does get last error, which uh, like who cares, but um, this is the way I like to do it. So I just send back a blank, short circuits it, the queue right there, the queue ends. And it doesn't send any kind of error or anything back either. So it doesn't make your queue kind of weird, but. Okay, so we under, understand that. Okay, going to stop the video at this point, and then I'm going to talk about the request itself. This is going to be an iterator request too, that's so why I want to have it in its own video because you definitely want to come back, see how to construct these iterators. You're going to be doing them a lot. Um, it's just really a way to query and get like a big response back in iterations, just like you would make a query and put a limit statement on it and kind of do a find by, in Ruby there's a thing in a method, that uh, Rails, uh, active record of find by each. Uh, you, know, you can't just grab uh, 10,000 customers, so it's called an iterator. So stop it here, we're gonna go to that next, because that's what